What's going on guys, Unknown Player here and today once again we've got a whole bunch of Destiny 2 stuff to round up and discuss. Lots of things in game and outside the game that I thought were interesting and I want to tell you guys about. There's a bunch of stuff that pertains to future content, some that we don't know much about. But I want to collect a bunch of items, some in game, some hidden, some not, but are definitely interesting and worth mentioning. On top of that I wanted to talk about exotic catalysts because a lot of them don't seem to be dropping right now, even the ones that are supposed to be. I want to give some insight on what's going on there. And of course I'll be going over some of the latest news and loot rewards and stuff like that. So. As usual, if you do enjoy this video and want to show some support, then hit the like button down below helps a ton. And with that being said, let's jump into it. So I wanted to begin with just a massive roundup of lots of weird items inside the Destiny 2 database, which some are unaccounted for, some are for future content, I'm sure, some are unsolved mysteries, and some we just don't know how to get just yet. Something pretty interesting is that one of the best perks in all of Destiny 1 called Rangefinder has actually been added into the game with Warmind. Obviously, Rangefinder so far hasn't been a thing in Destiny 2, it just isn't available on any weapons. The Destiny 1 version does have the exact same description, aiming this weapon increases its effective range. Obviously the name and the icon are the same, but it's also listed as a trait, so that's one of those end perks, kind of a main perk and a weapon. So Rangefinder could very well be a perk that comes to a legendary weapon soon, like an event weapon for example, or it could just be that Bungie changed their mind on a weapon and maybe wanted to have it, but then later decided against it. Probably one of the strangest items is this image of an underground bunker looking like a Rasputin bunker. Again, this was added with the Warmind DLC and it's some kind of thumbnail of sorts. Obviously it's very small, so you can't get a massive high resolution look at it but it's just very very strange it's probably quite hard to make out in the video but inside the doorways there are actually little robots standing there with guns kind of guarding the doorways so it is a really strange image again this location is nowhere inside mars or inside the warmind dlc but it is very similar to that original warmind bunker on the cosmodrome but again those robots standing there with guns just look super strange almost like a social space it could be some kind of real bunker hidden somewhere in the game or i think what's more likely it's probably a concept art that got changed a bit with the final version thought it was worth mentioning nonetheless where it turns out to be. On top of that, there are also three new redeemable items which are going to be tied to Faction Rally coming soon. So Future Warcart has the weaponized material which says it's going to help in the wars to come. New Monarchy has the building material which says New Monarchy can use this to rebuild the city. And then there's the fuel material for Dead Orbit which doesn't have a description but again it's the same thing. We also have a new item that was added called the Exotic Ornament Voucher. Take this voucher to test to exchange it for an exotic ornament of your choice. It doesn't have an icon so it just says temporary which kind of implies it may not be ready just yet but a guaranteed voucher like this would be pretty nice to see in addition to all those changes we saw to eververse in warmind obviously a lot of the exotics we normally see inside eververse were stripped out of it and put to end game vendors there's also test selling more guaranteed items and even the prismatic facet which is another chance to get more guaranteed stuff so it seems pretty strange but also quite nice i'm not sure how you'd get this thing i'm not sure when or if bungie plan on adding it now a different item that's also inside the game did catch my eye because a very weird looking emblem that isn't in the game just yet and isn't available i'm not sure why it's being hidden or classified but you might recognize those are actually the big kind of wave generators on titan you might remember i'm pretty sure it's the first or maybe second mission on titan where sloan asked you to go and unblock all the hive stuff on these big generators i mean it is a pretty cool looking emblem with the black and gold but it is very strange how this was added with the warmind dlc just a few weeks ago and doesn't seem to be attainable so it may have some relation to some easter egg or some secret it's possible there are ties between the hive on mars and the hive on titan but something pretty strange again it was added recently so i'm not sure what its purpose is i did also find a second look at the Bannerfall map, which of course is returning from Destiny 1 and it's being added with Season 3's Iron Banner. Again, you can see it's been blown up and destroyed a bit more after Red Legion invaded, and there's definitely a lot of rubble and debris everywhere, so it's not as clean as the original version. Now, I did also want to mention a few sleeper nodes which aren't actually accessible through the normal override frequencies. These are basically special nodes. So I've seen a few people saying and noticing how they've grabbed all 40 of the sleeper nodes, so 40 out of 40 and done the emblem. But there are still a few nodes around the map they haven't grabbed. Then are they missing something? Is the game bugged or what's going on with these extra ones that are unaccounted for. Now the answer is that these nodes are actually reserved for the nascent dawn quest so these are basically separate and kind of don't count towards the main 40. So you probably remember last week inside the madam subterrain at lost sector there is this one which again isn't part of the main 40 but you open it for free. So another one is actually just perched off the edge of this cliff in the big opening area where you first spawned down on Mars called Olympus Descent. So this one is actually going to be opened in this week's nascent dawn quest three out of five so it requires you to open a cache in Olympus Descent and this is the node. There's another one for step four out of five which is found in Rasputin's doorstep and that is this one literally outside the door to the right and there's another one for the fifth and final step and this one is in the Alton Dynamo area inside the big server room. There's actually three inside this big server room there's one straight in the middle the first one you see there's one on the left called stairwell and one on the right called heat shield. Again there's 
the two on the left and the right you do have to open as part of the 40 but the big middle one is actually not part of them that's separate four step five out of five so for those of you wondering what's the deal with these extra nodes should i open them are they part of the 40 is the game glitching that is the answer they're simply extras for this quest and you don't need to worry about them basically and it should save you a bit of time for the upcoming nascent dawn quest steps because now with this footage you know exactly where they are and where to actually go for them now also want to mention nightfall strike loop because obviously last week we saw for the not chris strike it was a bray tech rocket launcher which was pretty much from the same bray tech loot pool that of course means the zol strike does have its own unique loot but begs the question what is it going to be because right now there's no unaccounted for items or weapons inside the game and i've looked through all the legendary weapons and there are no more that are simply floating about so i don't think there's going to be any kind of weapon tied to the zol strike it's probably going to be one of these three exotic items the sparrow shipping ghost which currently unobtainable obviously i've talked about these items before in videos which you can't get right now inside the game although about two or three people in the entire world managed to get this sparrow so far through the first week when it was the arms dealer i'm pretty sure it was a bug or a glitch and it wasn't supposed to happen i have no idea where two of these are going to drop from but i can almost guarantee one of them is going to be the zol nightfall strike loot so of course i'll let you guys know when these items do start dropping so moving on i did want to talk about exotic masterwork so there's a very strange thing in game where a lot of them don't seem to be dropping where they're supposed to obviously like i've said before about half the weapons just don't have their masterworks available they're not supposed to be dropping at all pretty much any weapon that doesn't have the actual catalyst node when you go and inspect it inside the menu those weapons aren't supposed to have them but obviously there are a bunch that do have the node and are actually giving you descriptions of where to go find them these ones like darcy borealis crimson tractor cannon these are all from pve kills there's also i believe the vigilance wing and jade rabbit were shot randomly at crucible games i believe the colony is also supposed to be from crucible games but i haven't seen it myself personally let me know if you guys have there's also the huckleberry which is dropping like it's supposed to inside heroic adventures so these weapons like cold heart merciless watercliff coil risk runner and prometheus lens which should all drop from strikes but as far as i'm aware nobody has gotten any of those strike catalysts to drop from they just simply aren't coming from anywhere there's also the skyburner's oath which should be dropping somewhere inside the raids but again nobody's got it because i don't think bungie would put the description in the game and say get this from strikes and then have it not drop so i'm pretty sure some kind of bug and then maybe hopefully fixing it there are of course the three that are tied to faction rally so graviton lance from dead orbit sweet business from new monarchy and also sunshot from future war cult bungie did of course announce these changes to faction rally happening next tuesday on the 29th so i'm assuming that's when the faction rally itself is going to begin but it is something i did want to mention because a lot of you guys have been asking me why is nothing dropping from strikes is it a bug or am i just getting bad rng it's just simply the case that nobody's gotten them and hopefully it's something that bungie are working on but again i'll let you guys know if bungie give an update to it now in terms of my own progress with catalyst i've actually gotten only one drop for me so far my rng has been pretty bad and i got it literally a couple of days ago during escalation protocol but this was the darcy catalyst so a weapon i've actually been using quite a lot recently so for this you need to go around and get i think 300 headshots which is quite a lot especially for a heavy power weapon ammo for this thing isn't exactly everywhere so 300 headshots is quite a lot so the masterwork bonus for this is actually i think plus 20 stability so we'll actually see how much that is and upgrade it right now i'm not expecting a massive increase but hopefully it's a little bit decent but to be honest it's probably one of my new favorite exotics to use i actually love using it i actually really like that they force you to use the weapon to upgrade the catalyst it's kind of like a little journey with the weapon because over time you kind of grow to love it and you do actually kind of learn a play style with it and eventually you become really good with the weapon so if you try out this thing right now we can see a bit of the recoil it kicks a little bit not a massive amount for a sniper to be honest and now if we go and master work this thing so we've got a done just as completed and if we apply the thing boom there you go oh it's actually counted all the kills i've gotten so far that's cool so this is 355 enemies defeated so not a bad ratio obviously it starts counting when you begin the process of doing the 300 headshots so i guess out of all those kills i've got 300 headshots and 50 body shots so not bad but let's see how the recall on this thing is so what is this new version like uh well yeah not massively noticeable but definitely is less than before and if you spam the thing and try and control it yeah it's definitely a little bit less I think it's pretty much as I expected, just a nice little bonus. But again, with the perk, you obviously shouldn't be spamming it, so the recoil should never get that crazy in the first place. I mean, it's probably not that noticeable to you guys, but as someone who's been using the weapon for like 350 kills in the past day, but it is definitely a nice little bonus, but you have weapons like the Merciless, which is plus 40 stability and 40 range. So you can see some of them are pretty crazy. But I think Bungie know that Darcy is technically one of the best weapons in the game right now, so the plus 20, I guess, is fair. But like I said, this is the only catalyst I've gotten so far. My RNG has been awful. I'll go somewhere where there's a few more high-level enemies kind of demonstrate it but it was honestly very weird to get used to like i said i've always considered the darcy to be just complete trash it was hands down one of the worst exotics in destiny 2 i mean snipers are bad and then also it being exotic and it being low rate of fire it just was an awful weapon so for the past like seven months i've just had it ingrained in my brain the weapon is complete trash and it's just never going to be good you can see that shot did nearly a third of this guy's health 
Again, he's not the most powerful enemy, but still, he does have a bit of health. If I was to quickly shoot him in the head, that doesn't do the full damage. That did 870. And if I get a body shot, then that does, well, at 249. But if you hold it on his head for a bit, then you get the full damage. But the weapon is just absolutely ridiculous. It's been hands down one of my new favorites. And again, I never thought I'd use a sniper in PvE. But every time I've been running strikes, doing milestones, I've nonstop had this weapon on. I've absolutely loved it. It's also very good against Argos, the first raid layer boss, because he's so big. It's mainly good for anyone that has a really big head, a big crit spot, and doesn't move too much. I honestly wouldn't recommend it for Callus because he just squirms and just wiggles too much. Like when you do damage to him, he's like bending over, he's like holding his face, and he's just like really hard to hit. Like it doesn't matter how accurate you are, you're going to miss a lot of shots or just waste time waiting for him to stand back up again and stop holding his head. So it really does depend on the boss, but for a lot of enemies like the mages in the not Chris strike, those knights that carry the balls, it just destroys them. And those guys are normally a massive pain. They take like a rocket and you only six of those. Or you can shoot them with a sniper bullet and you've got 24 of these things. So this Darcy, again, I cannot sing its praise enough. It is amazing, trust me. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did and want to support this channel, then hit the like button down below. It would be massively appreciated. If you're new to my channel and don't want to miss out on my future videos, then of course, make sure you are subscribed. If you want to watch another Warmind video from myself, you can click this image on screen right now. But as always, you guys have been awesome. Appreciate you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.